The Snow Queen in Seven Stories by Hans Christian Andersen. We continue with the fifth story, The Little Robber Girl. They drove on through the thick forest, but the coach gleamed like a torch that dazzled the robber's eyes, and they could not bear it. That is gold! That is gold! cried they, and rushed forward and seized the horses, killing the postions, the coachman, and the footman, and then they put little Gerda out of the carriage. She is fat, she is pretty, she is fed with nut kernels, said the old robber woman, who had long matted beard and shaggy eyebrows that hung down over her eyes. She's as good as a little pet lamb. How I shall relish her. And she drew out her shining knife that gleamed in a horrible way. Oh, screamed the old woman at the same moment for her own daughter, who hung at her back, bit her ear in a very naughty and spiteful manner. You ugly brat, screamed the old woman, and she had not time to kill Gerda. She shall play with me, said the little robber girl. She shall give me her muff and her pretty dress and sleep with me in my bed. And then the girl gave another bite, so that the woman jumped high up and turned right round and all the robbers laughed and said, Look how she dances with her calf. I want to go into the carriage, said the little robber girl. And she would have her own way, for she was spoiled and very obstinate. And she and Gerda sat in the carriage and drove over stock and stone deep into the forest. The little robber girl was as big as Gerda, but stronger and more broad-shouldered. And she had a brown skin. Her eyes were not quite black, and they looked almost mournful. She claps, clasped little Gerda round the waist and said, They shall not kill you as long as I am not angry with you. I suppose you are a princess? No, replied Gerda, and she told all that had happened to her, and how fond she was of little Kay. The little robber girl looked at her seriously, nodded slightly, and said, They shall not kill you even if I do get angry for you, with you, for then I will do it myself. And then she dried Gerda's eyes and put her two hands into the beautiful muff that was so soft and warm. Now the coach stopped, and they were in the courtyard of a robber castle. It had burst from the top it had burst from the top to the ground. Ravens and crows flew out of the great holes and the big buildings, each of which looked as if he could devour a man, jumped high up, but they did not bark. Ha <laughs> ha! I read that wrong. Ravens and crows flew out of the great holes and big bulldogs, each of which looked as if he could devour a man, jumped high up, but they did not bark, for that was forbidden. In the great old smoky hall, a bright fire burned upon the stone floor. The smoke passed along under the ceiling and had to seek an exit for itself. A great cauldron of soup was boiling, and hares and rabbits were roasting on the spit. You shall sleep tonight with me and all my little animals, said the robber girl. They got something to eat and drink, and then went to a corner where straw and carpets were spread out. Above these sat on lathes and perches were more than a hundred pigeons that all seemed asleep, but they turned a little when the two little girls came. All these belong to me, said the little robber girl, and she quickly seized one of the nearest, held it by the feet, and shook it so that it flapped its wings. Kiss it, she cried, and beat it to Gerda's face. There sit the wood rascals, she continued, pointing at a number of lathes that had been nailed in front of a hole in the wall. Those are the wood rascals, those two. They fly away directly if one does not keep them well locked up. And here's my old sweetheart, Ba. And she pulled out by the horn a reindeer that was tied up and had a polished copper ring around its neck. You're obliged to keep him tight, too, or he'd run away from us. 
every evening I tickle his neck with a sharp knife, and he's very frightened at that. And the little girl drew a long knife from the cleft in the wall and let it glide over the reindeer's neck. The poor creature kicked out with its legs, and the little robber girl laughed and drew Gerda into bed with her. Do you keep the knife while you're asleep? asked Gerda, and looked at the rather looked at it in a rather frightened way. I always sleep with my knife, replied the robber girl. One does not know what may happen. But now tell me again what you told me just now about little Kay and why you came into the whole wide world. And Gerda told it again from the beginning, and the wood pigeons cooed above them in their cage, and the other pigeons slept. The little robber girl put her arm around Gerda's neck, held her knife to the other hand, and slept so that no one could hear her. But Gerda could not close her eyes at all. She did not know whether she was to live or die. The robber sat round the fire, sang and drank, and the old robber woman tumbled about. It was quite terrible for a little girl to behold. Then the wood pigeon said, Coo, coo, we have seen little Kay. A white owl was carrying his sledge. He sat in the Snow Queen's carriage, which drove up close by the forest as we lay in our nests. She blew upon us young pigeons, and all died except us two. Coo, coo. What are you saying there? asked Gerda. Whither was the Snow Queen traveling? Do you know anything about it? She was probably journeying to Lapland, for that's where they have always ice and snow. Ask the reindeer that is tied to the cord. There is ice and snow yonder, and it is glorious and fine, said the reindeer. There one may run about free in great glittering plains. There the Snow Queen has her summer tent, but her strong castle is up towards the North Pole on the island that is called Spitzberg. Oh, Kay, little Kay, cried Gerda. You must lie still, exclaimed the little robber girl, or I shall thrust my knife into your body. In the morning, Gerda told her all the wood pigeons had said, and the robber girl looked quite serious and nodded her head and said, That's all the same. That's all the same. Do you know where Lapland is? She asked the reindeer. Who should know better than I? The creature replied. Its eyes sparkled in its head. I was born and bred there. I ran about there in the snowfields. Listen, said the robber girl to Gerda. You see, all our men have gone away. Only mother is still here. And she'll stay. But towards noon, she drinks out of the big bottle. And then she sleeps for a little while. And then I'll do something for you. Then she sprang out of bed and clasped her mother round the neck and pulled her beer cry beard, crying, Good morning, my old nanny goat! And her mother flipped her nose till it was red and blue, and it was all done for pure love. When the mother had drunk out of her bottle and gone to sleep upon it, the robber girl went to the reindeer and said, I should very much like to tickle you a few times more with a knife, for you're very funny then. But it's all the same. I'll loosen your cord and help you out so that you may run to Lapland. But you must use your legs well and carry this little girl to the palace of the Snow Queen, where her playfellow is. You've heard what she told me, for she spoke loud enough and you were listening. The reindeer sprang up high for joy. The robber girl lifted the little Gerda on his back and had the forethought to tie her fast, even to give her her own little cushion as a saddle. There are your fur boots for you, she said, for it's growing cold, but I shall keep the muff for that's very pretty. Still, you shall not be cold for all that. Here is my mother's big muffles. They'll just... 
reach up to your elbows. Now you look cool. Now you look just like my ugly mother. And Gerda wept for joy. I can't bear to see you whimpering, said the little robber girl. No, you ought to just look very glad. And here are two loaves and a ham for you. Now you won't be hungry. These were tied on the reindeer's back. The little robber girl opened the door and coaxed all the big dogs and then cut the rope with her sharp knife and said to the reindeer, Now run, but take good care of the little girl. And Gerda stretched out her hands with the big muffles towards the little robber good girl and said, Farewell! And the reindeer ran over stock and stone away through the great forest over marshes and steps as quick as it could go. The wolves howled and the ravens croaked. Iss, iss. It went in the air. It seemed as if the sky were flashing fire. Those are my old northern lights, said the reindeer. Look how they glow. And then it ran on faster than ever, day and night. And thus ends the fifth story of the Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. We'll meet again for the sixth.